A couple of months ago, I moved into this house uh, and I didn't move my workbench with me because it sucked. It was made out of pallets. So I need to build a new one. So this is some 60 by 60 box section and I'm just gonna use this to make a leg. Oh, my voice broke then, that was manly, wasn't it? So this is a rivnet, which just means it's just a rivet with a thread in it. And the way they work, is they thread onto this tool, just a, any rivnet tool, and you put it into the hole, and then you crush it. So here's our leg. I've just drilled another six holes here. So we've got six here and six here, one for each member coming off the leg. So this is our surface. Here's a member, here's a member. So these bolt holes connect to the end of the box section that we're using, the rectangular box section. So this is what the end of one of those structural members looks like. This is just a test piece I did a while ago or a few days ago. Um, and it bolts on, bolts on like this. Right, but you can see we don't have access inside this tube. So we have to use a bolt in this direction. So if our bolt comes up through here, you know, we need a way of fastening that. And I can sort of do it from here, but not very well. And I need access for, to the other six, right? So I need an access hole on the other side. So that's that leg done. Now I'm gonna make the first horizontal member. So here are those two ends you just saw me make, uh, and they have holes that coincide. So here's those rivnets I set, and those holes in the side of the leg. So this is definitely a little bit fiddly because we have a tiny little access hole here, and we need to get screws up in here. There you go. So anyway, that's the basic frame up now. We've got four, four legs. Here's one of these horizontal members that I was talking about. Uh, there's a short one and a long one. 2.5 meters long, 1.2 meters deep. So this workbench is obviously very strong vertically. You know, you could load this up pretty good vertically, but it doesn't have that much rigidity horizontally, you know? Like, I mean, it doesn't deflect too much with a sideward load like that. But you can imagine once I get a vise on here and I start trying to hacksaw through some steel, I might be hacksawing at the resonant frequency of the workbench and then it's going to bounce around and move all over the place and once I put a load of heavy steel on the surface then that will reduce the resonant frequency a lot and make it extremely annoying to work with. So the next step is to put some bracing in here to create some triangles. Now often with workbenches you'll see something like that 
Um, a pu putting a structural member here doesn't work very well for me because I want access to steel underneath. I, I don't have a huge workshop, so I'd love to be able to use under the workbench as a place to store steel. Uh, and if I put a member here, that's right in the way. So instead, I'm gonna put a member here. So every corner, I'm gonna put one of these uh, 40 by 40 tubes, 300 mil from here to the center, 300 mil to the center. That makes this dimension 424.26 millimeters long. So that's how that fits there. Yeah, that's great. So I've decided to fold these caps instead of weld a cap on, uh, and that's purely because I am not good at welding. Uh, or rather, I have experienced MIG welding and I would trust my MIG welds, but I don't have a MIG machine. I have a TIG machine, but I'm still learning how to TIG, so my technique isn't perfect yet, and I don't want to build a whole workbench around imperfect welds and have it fail on me. So I'm just using this technique, which is pretty sturdy. These two layers aren't just floating, they're clamped together by the rivet itself. <coughs> So the next step is installing more of these horizontal members, the long ones, but internally to support the surface. So this is the stock that I'm making those internal members out of. It's the same as the, uh, the other horizontal members. And I need to create a flange on the end. This time I'm not capping it like I did with the last members. This time I'm creating an external flange. Whenever I put this hearing protection on, I always check the insides for spiders. This is a very spider ridden house. Oh, I'm so excited to get all these in, man. This is awesome. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna uh, take this out and drill the rest of the holes. Last one. For now, anyway. There we go.
So I'm using these bolts, which are countersunk, obviously. So we need to countersink all these holes. Excellent. Okay, let's uh, cut some holes. Okay, I got everything bolted on. Listen to it. So I've countersunk these so that they're all about a millimeter deeper than the surface, and that's on purpose. Uh, that's so that when I'm running things over the surface, they don't make contact with the bolt because I don't want to wear this head out so, and damage this hole so that I can't remove the bolt. So the fact that I've sunk this down a little bit deeper than flush it allows me to have a slight angle on this and still miss that socket. So it just keeps that a little safer. As nice as this looks, uh, it's not just going to be a bare surface. I'm mounting a vise here. Specifically, I'm mounting this vise here, which takes M12 bolts. I'm in high gear, aren't I? There we go. Mm -hmm. These M12 rib nuts can be a bit stiff. Oh, that was quite easy. Okay. Okay, incredible. There you go, I'm just entirely hanging off the vice now. So now I have the challenge of moving this thing. Right. We're under tension. Yes, that's lifting. Look at that. Okay, we have one leg off. So I should be able to just do the rest by hand. Yes, I can. Oh, I'll tell you what, that is some good space, isn't it? I like that. Look at all this space I can work in now. So there's pros and cons to this workbench, right? A, it's huge, so I've got loads of space to do stuff, um, but that consumes a load of space at the workshop. B, it's made of steel, which is great because it's heat resistant, you know? I can do that for a while and it doesn't matter. And it's conductive, so I can weld on it. The downside, really loud. But overall, I feel like I've struck the right balance between pros and cons for the way I use a workbench. So that's it, that's the workbench done. I've got my stuff set up on here. I've got my TIG welder up there, which I didn't use for this project because I'm still learning. Yeah, so I'm so happy with this project. I've been wanting to do this for years. Uh, I bought the steel like a couple years ago and just haven't had the time to deal with it. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Oh, let me show you my next project. So among other things, this is a pile of these server power supplies. Each one's good for 82 amps at 12 volts. That's like a kilowatt each. I've got eight of them. The next project will be combining all eight of these into a nice, pretty power supply. I'll probably be burning some stuff. So subscribe if you want to see that. Um, goodbye. <laughs>